Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In the last tutorial, we made this AI using the new state tree system where they will just randomly roam around. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is advance upon them. We're going to make a more advanced state tree where the NPC can be instructed to follow another actor. So this is useful for like guards and companions who need to follow you. As a bonus, we'll add some interactive dialogue with the NPC that when we talk to them, we can tell them to either follow us or stop following us. So let's get started. So I've changed one minor thing since last time and that's just I've gone back to a basic blueprint style NPC just for now while I'm doing the AI stuff. I don't really see the need of using ALS for everyone. For the player it makes sense you're doing a lot of things but like my basic NPCs aren't going to be climbing walls and stuff like that so I don't know I might change it around in the future but for now all it is is a basic NPC type of character and it's just got the basic stuff on I need and I bound the state tree to that NPC just like we did in the last video. So I you can see she's going to randomly walk around and she'll eventually pause and move to a different location. So how do we go about actually making them follow us? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come and create another state tree to handle this. Now the benefit of state trees and something I need to touch on to is you can have multiple state trees to break down your state tree logic which is perfect. However you can't currently pick different state trees at runtime which is a bit annoying really. So you've got a couple of options to do in 5.3 where you can build all the state trees into one mega state tree which I'm not going to do in this tutorial if you want to combine them just combine them give yourself a state or something where it says if roaming do this bunch of logic if following do this bunch of logic in 5.4 they've added the ability to call external state trees so you can have one state tree which says if you're doing this go to this state tree which is better I've not tested it yet I'm not factoring that into the tutorial as we go because 5.4 is only just out and not a lot of plugins actually have support for it yet so let's move on to our new state trees. So first things so first, make sure you've set up your state tree stuff from the previous tutorial. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to artificial intelligence state tree and I'm going to click state tree component and I will call this st underscore follow actor. And I'm going to call it actor because then you can make it really follow anything you want. If you want it to follow a blue mystical light, you can. Chances are that blue mystical light is not going to be a character. So that's perfect but an actor also represents a player or another NPC. So I'm going to come in and set the actor context is going to be my BP NPC. That just means the actor that's going to be using this state tree is a type of BP NPC that lets us skip casting it. it handles all of it for us so the first thing we need is we need a way to tell this actor who to follow if anyone because if you've got no one to follow then you don't really do anything so I'm going to come onto my BP NPC and I'm going to add a variable down here called actor to follow and I'm going to set this to a type of actor I'm going to make it public and I'm going to compile and save so now this NPC we can assign an actor to follow like so so for now I'm actually going to duplicate this NPC here will give it a different mesh just so it looks ever so slightly differently. There we go. You've got a male with short hair there. And we'll tell this NPC at the back to follow this male NPC. So we can actually see it in action. So next, jumping back into our follow actor, we need a way to pull in this follow actor to follow variable into our state tree. And that's where we're going to use an evaluator. An evaluator is something that runs at set intervals throughout your state tree running where we can pick it up, get data and share it with our state tree. So I'm going to to my content drawer and inside my AI folder I'm going to right click new folder and I'm going to do evaluators and I'm going to open this up and then inside here I'm going to right click blueprint class and I'm going to search for evaluator and you'll see this state tree evaluator blueprint base I'm going to click that one and I'm going to click select I'm going to call this STE for state tree evaluator get follow details so inside here just like the tasks that we covered last time we have a set of functions that we can override we have the tree start tree stop and tick so tree start is whenever your state tree first start so right at the beginning before it calls root it will call all evaluators start which is where this event will run tree start is at the end when your state tree is finished processing it will go off and refetch the data and then the final one is tick is event tick so how often you want it to run so in my case tree start for everything i've done so far has been more than fine so we need a way to actually get the npc that is controlling this state tree so this bp npc and then we can link across to the follow actor and we can pass it back into the state tree a little bit of a round loop 
but it does make sense. So let's go into the evaluator and let's create a variable so we can pass the NPC from the context into the evaluator. I'm going to create a variable here and I'll call it NPC owner. And I'm going to set this to a type of BP NPC because that's what we've got. I'm going to make sure it's ticked as public or toggle the visibility. And then I'm going to come and set the category to input. And if you missed it in the last tutorial, state tree variables work very, very well based on the categories of input and output. We covered input last time and we will be covering output shortly. So now if we go back to our state tree, we can add the evaluator at the side. We can click it and we can click STE get follow details. If you open it up, you can see we need to pass in a BP NPC. So I'll click this little link and I'll click actor. Boom. So it's now passed it into our evaluator so we can actually start doing stuff with it. So inside here, what do we actually want to do? Well, we want to get the follow actor if it exists. So I'm going to grab the NPC owner. I'm going to drag off and I'm going to do get, follow, get actor to follow. And then I'm just going to drag off this and promote it to a variable. And I will call this actor to follow. That works quite well for me. And I'll tick it as public. And then I'm going to connect it across to here. Now we need to actually pass this variable back into the state tree. So we need to tell it we're outputting it to the state tree. So all you need to do is come and set the category to output. Make sure you put a capital O, compile and save. And that's the end of our evaluator done. If you want to get any more data, just grab it all in here, create your output variables. I've got one in my other game where there's like 20 different variables for all the different logic to work with. So you can really go for it really. And I'm going to go back to the state tree. And now you can see we've got an actor to follow output here. We can't really do anything with it because it's outputting it. It's a variable we can use, which is perfect. So now we can move on to our task, which says follow this actor here. So I'm going to come back to my content drawer and into my tasks folder. And I'm actually going to duplicate this move to random location task because it contains 90% of everything we need. I will run through it again for those who haven't followed the previous tutorial in a moment. I'm going to rename this to stt for state tree task underscore follow. Actor. And now we can open this up. So the basics of this is just like the previous one, we have our functions and I've overridden the enter state. So when the state tree comes into this state and tells it to execute this task, it will get our character, which is our BP NPC. It will tell it to move to an actor or location. And then at the moment, it will get a random reachable point, which I'm just going to delete because we don't need that. And then it will either finish the task successfully or not, depending if it can get to it or not. That's basically if you're out of bounds for it, it can't reach you or something. So how do we actually tell it to move to this actor? Just like we did on the previous one, I'm just going to promote this goal actor to a variable and I'll call it actor to follow. And then I'm going to drag it into the input category and make sure it's publicly visible so we can actually pass the actor into it. I'll set the acceptance radius to, I'll keep it at 200. I'm going to tick continuous goal tracking. Now we didn't tick this previously because if you're moving to a random location, the AI doesn't need to update where that location is every single frame because it already knows where it is. It's a fixed vector. It's a fixed point. Whereas following an actor, that actor can move around. So if you imagine having a guard who's following their person they're protecting, then you want them to continuously update to that. If you don't want that, you can absolutely untick it. You can also promote this to a variable if you want more flexibility in that sense. For me, I'm okay just keep it as is. And then on request failed or move, I'm just going to think. Now I'm going to hit compile and save. Now if we jump back into our state tree here, so the first thing I'm going to do under here is I will add a child state and I will call this follow actor. Inside here, I will add our task onto it, which will be our stt follow actor. And you know, I don't like the badly named ones. So I'm going to come back into my task, class settings, and inside blueprint display name, I will just call it follow actor. Now I'll hit compile and save. And I'll come back to here. I can delete this one off and you'll see if I add it back in, we'll have a nice neat name look. Follow actor. And I'll open this up and you can see we need to pass it a character in. So the character, the character who we're telling to move somewhere will be the, our actor. And the actor to follow, if we open this up, you can now see we actually see our evaluator here. And if you hover over it, you can see we have our actor to follow, the exposed variable we've given it. Perfect. So we can click this one. Now it's complaining that we're missing a transition because after it finishes this task, it doesn't know what to do. So we're going to click the transitions button. Completed, if you remember, means it doesn't care if it's failed or succeeded. It's finished. It's the end of it. So what does it want to do? And we're just going to say, go back up to root. So it'll come to root. It will come down. It'll say, follow the actor. It will reach our actor eventually. And then it will go back to root and say, what do you want to do? Well, keep following the actor. And that'll do for me for now. So if we keep it as it is at the moment, they will basically walk to the actor they need to follow, immediately start trying to walk to them again. So you'll get that weird effect where as a person slowly walking, if this follow actor is running to towards them, they'll run, stop, run, stop, run, stop, run, stop, because they're trying to just keep executing it. So to make it a bit more believable, if you think of games like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, where you're, you tell your gang members to follow, you typically start walking and they stand there for a moment and then they carry on walking to you. It's to sell the whole thing that if you're walking with a, a few friends, if one friend starts walking, everybody doesn't immediately hive mind start walking. There's a small delay. So let's add that in as well. So on this root node, I'm just going to add a new state below it and I'll 
I'll call it follow delay. And I'm going to add a task, just like we used on the previous one, called delay task. And I'm just going to set the duration to two, and I'll set a random deviation of, we'll do two. So some instances, they will follow immediately. Other instances, they'll wait for up to four seconds, potentially. And then just to make sure I've got it all right, I'm going to add a transition which goes back to root. And I'm going to click the one above, because at the moment, as soon as this completes, it will go back up. And I'm going to set this to next state. So it'll basically just go down the tree. So let's hit compile and save. So as I said at the start of the tutorial, this is where it gets a bit funky now. Because if we come back to my NPC and we search for this NPC's AI controller, which is this one here that I've set up, we basically want to change this state tree to work differently now. So we want this AI here to randomly roam, but we want this AI here to follow this NPC. In Unreal 5.2.5.3, the only way you can do this is by combining all of your state trees into one big state tree with states. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to test out the 5.4, see how reliable it is, if I think it's good enough for us to show I'll put a tutorial out for it. So for now, I'm going to take the horrible approach, and I'm actually going to create a child blueprint of this state tree. I'm going to right-click, create a child blueprint of this AI controller. And so I'm going to right-click child blueprint, and I'll just call this EPAI, for blueprint AI controller, underscore NPC underscore follow and I'm just going to outright give it a completely different AI state tree. It's not the best way by far of doing this but for now and the purposes of the tutorial it will work okay. So now I can come back to my specific AI here where I want them to follow and if I search for controller I can now just move them to the follow AI controller. There we go. And now if I hit compile and save and everything should be linked up so if I click play this AI should now randomly roam and this AI should follow them. Let's see how it goes. There we go. So you can see this AI is randomly moving. This this one is following him, but it could be a coincidence. They could be going to the same place. There you go. She stopped. He stopped. He's going to start moving in a moment. There you go. And she's currently not reacted yet because the delay time's going, and now she's following them. How cool is that, ladies and gentlemen? A nice, simple cheat. And you can absolutely bump this up as well. If we were to turn these into guards, then I can see I've turned these two NPCs and added another one to guards, and this one to a royalty king. And now if we run it, the guards successfully follow the king. You see this in games like Assassin's Creed, where you have groups of people following each other or following an individual or following a path typically or other games where you're protecting a king kind of thing. So you'll see the king will move and the guards will be like yo let's follow him rather glitchingly we can probably solve that in a future tutorial but as it stands they will try their best to follow the NPC. There you go. They've got no AI avoidance for one another so at the moment all they're going to do is just follow the king. That is their goal in life. They don't care if anybody else is next to them. And there you go. So that's a very basic start for an AI following thing. So I did say at the beginning of the tutorial, we're going to look at adding an interactable part where we can just steal a guard away. We can talk to them and say, hey, follow us instead for a minute and they'll follow us. So there are loads of different ways to do this. And in my case, I'm going to be using narrative dialogue and interaction. But if you've got anything you've custom made yourself, you can do this really easily as well. It's just one thing I've got. So say if we want this guard with the spiky ears things to be able to for us to walk up to him and say, hey, follow us instead. So I'm going to come and create a new dialogue for us to actually do that. If you've got your own dialogue system you can use that if you haven't got a dialogue system just in when you fire a line trace at the guard and press a key tell him to do it so i'm going to come into my narrative folder and i will go into dialogues i will right click narrative dialogue i will call it db kings guard one there we go and we'll open that up so i will make sure that the speaker id kings guard one is attached to this guy as a tag so we actually know who we're referencing when we talk to him then back in here i will give it a speaker name of kings guard one just so it looks nicer and back in the dialogue graph i'm going to remove the hi there Guard. And just for quick sake, I'm not going to make him say anything. We'll just go to player and we'll say, hey, follow me. I need your help. And you could easily blind some conditions onto this to say if you are a certain rank. Otherwise, they tell you to, you know, shove off kind of thing. But for now, we're just going to restrain to it. And hey, follow me. I need your help. The next one we'll do is, hey, I don't need help anymore. Go goodbye. Goodbye. There we go. Uh, and that's the basic two ones we're going to have. Then so we'll hit compile and save. I'll make sure that if I come and click this guard that I give him a correct dialogue. So on the interact begin dialogue, otherwise if you've just got any dialogue, just play your dialogue. So King's Guard 1, like so. So if we just give it a little try just to see if this works as it is so far. So you can see the guards are walking, but if I walk up and try to talk to him, you'll see it says I can interact with him. If I talk to him, it says, hey, follow me, I need your help. Hey, I don't need any help, goodbye. So that's working. But we'll notice that if the king starts walking away, the guard will walk as well. So the state tree is still active, even though we're in the middle of dialogue. And we could easily just keep him going, click the button, and then the key... It 
you could be all the way across the other end of the map. So we need to stop that. So the easiest way to stop this is I'm going to go into my dialog and my master dialog. So for all dialog I control, if you're using a dialog system of your own, basically you're going to do the same thing when the dialog begins and when the dialog ends in a moment. But I'm going to override the function on begin dialog. And then in here, I'm going to just get speakers and I'm going to drag off of this and I'm going to do for each loop. And then from here, I'm going to break on this. And then from the loop body, I'm just going to get all actors with tag and I'm going to plug the speaker ID in it. So this is successfully going down all of our speakers in here and getting the actual world actor. Just in case we've got an actor with multiple ones, I'm going to loop over both of them. And then in here, I'm just going to do get AI controller. And then if it's valid, so I'll just do an is valid check just in case, always safer. Then I'm going to drag off of this and do get brain component. And then the brain component is what controls all AI on this AI controller. So whether you're using behavior trees or state trees, and I can drag off of this and just do stop logic. And I'll connect that to is valid. The reason will be dialog started. So this is for debugging as well. And you can use it in some aspects if you need to figure out why they've started. So for instance, you might be able to just say, oh, this enemy is attacking me. I'll start dialog with him. If the reason you're stopping the logic is because dialog started, you can ignore it. Maybe something like that. One other thing I'm going to do is just drag off the array element. And I'm just going to use my interface to get the movement component. If you don't know what this is on my NPC, I have simply added a really basic interface, BPI character, and all it's got is a bunch of different methods so I don't have to cast to the individual actors. And one of them is get the movement component like so. Super, super simple. Otherwise, you can just cast to it. But all this lets me do is get the movement component no matter what type of entity it is, unless it's not physically got one. And then I'll do an is valid on here just in case for some reason we're querying something that doesn't have a movement component. And then from here, I will just do stop movement immediately. So what this is going to actually do is if we stop the logic, that will stop the state tree from running. However, what it might not do is actually stop the character physically moving because they could still be following it. Whereas to stop active movement, we'll just uh, freeze them in place. And then what I'm going to do to re-enable this is I'm just going to come and copy all of this except the event at the start. I'll copy it. I'll override the function on end dialog and I'll just paste this in here, move it all the way across, connect it up and then just reverse what we've done. So we'll find all the actors. And yes, I am keeping the for each loops in again to find it. You might think it's counterintuitive. If you think about the other way of doing it will be to store this you get several disadvantages because one, whenever you start dialogue, you'll have an increase in memory because you're storing all the actors. And then if you destroy some of those actors in the dialogue for whatever reason, then you have to somehow deal with that as well. Whereas if we just find them again, we've only got a small processing hit when we try to find them because we're not holding them in memory. And if any are destroyed, then it doesn't matter because it won't care. So instead of stop logic, we'll just drag off the brain component and do restart logic. So it'll tell it to restart itself. And then we don't need the movement component this time. So we can just delete it. Off. And we'll hit compile and save. And just as I was about to test this, I found a small issue that um, I don't believe I've ever experienced before, to be honest, but never mind. And um, basically, calling stop on a brain component simply stops the logic straight away that it's running. So if they're in the middle of attacking, you call stop, they will stop attacking. But then the state tree will rerun itself because the state tree is continuous and it keeps running, and then it will just keep doing the exact same thing again. So if you run the code as is at the moment, it will basically just not do anything. Or at least look like it's not do anything they might stop for a second kind of thing so what we actually need to do is we need to get the actual state tree and call stop on that specific state tree not the brain component so what i'm actually going to do is just delete these bits out here and i'm going to open up my ai controllers that we have so i'm going to open up the bpmpc i'm going to come and create a new interface inside my blueprints folder inside interfaces i'm going to right click and i'm going to do blueprint and i'm going to do interface and i'm going to call it bpi underscore ai controller and I'm going to open it up. So what I'm going to do is create a new function called stop AI logic. And I'm going to create another one just called start AI logic. And the reason we're doing this instead of simply getting the state tree is this gives us the ability to call any AI controller, whether they're using state trees, behavior trees, or even some random bespoke AI you've downloaded online. This framework will mean you can stop any of them just by going to the correct controller. I'm going to turn off this BPI AI controller. I'm going to come into my BP AI NPC and I'm going to go class set settings, implemented interfaces, and I'm going to add our AI controller interface. You'll see in the interfaces here, we have a start logic and a stop logic here. I'm going to implement both of them just by double clicking them. Then in this particular NPC, I'm going to drag the state tree in. I'm going to drag off of this and do stop logic on the actual state tree. And then the reason, uh, we could actually add the reason part of the start AI logic, to be honest. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? So I'll go back to the BPA, BPI AI controller, click stop logic, add an input of stop reason, and I'll set it to a time 
part of string. So we'll call it a string. And that's starting the logic, we don't need to tell it why we're starting it, it's only stopping. Now if we come back to our AI controller, you will see if we refresh the stop function, we now have a stop reason. If we move this stop logic to the to the actual correct event, like so, and plug it in, we can plug the reason in, and then that should successfully stop that state tree. And then for the start logic, we just do the exact same thing, we'll just call restart. There we go. So this is a much nicer way, and it's not going to tie our dialog directly to the, to the AI controller with casting, so it's even more memory efficient as well. We don't need to actually do it to our follow, because it is a child of BPI NPC, so they're using the same state tree. All we're doing is changing the badly named state tree that they're using. It's the same state tree component, but the state tree asset it's using is different, so we shouldn't have to implement those again. Now if I come back to my dialog again, get AI controller, I can just simply drag off and do stop AI logic, and I can plug this in like so. Stop reason will be dialog started and we can just drag this bit back across because these are still valid and then same again instead of restart logic down here and the is valid we can just simply come and call start ai logic it's actually a lot cleaner doing it this way as well now if we compile and save and we try it again this time when we look up to the npc whether he's in the middle of walking or he's paused he will freeze and focus on us until we finished with him and then at that point he will continue doing whatever he needs to do so you can see he's currently following it so if we walk up and say hey talk to me it'll just stop because it's hey what do you need perfect i haven't set the dialogue up to turn random followers yet that's fine so i'll say i don't need help anymore go away and it'll just now proceed to follow continuously the king like he should catching up to it if the king was a million miles away the guard would run along it's quite funny you do see sometimes see this in skyrim if you like find a pack of travelers and talk to one of the travelers and just hold on to it while everybody else walks away you'll see them run after them which is quite funny but that's what we've basically recreated so now how do we actually tend to follow us instead of the other guy we need to say whenever we select this one change who they follow which is really easy to do so i'm going to come into my narrative folder and create a new event if you're not using narrative basically narrative events let us add little portions of code to a specific dialogue node if you can do something like that on yours perfect if not find a way to do it you basically just need to run the same code so i'm going to come and add a new event here and i will call it any underscore change actor to follow and i'm going to open this up i'm going to set the class settings already first so change actor to follow and then i'm going to come and override the execute event function here so we've got our pawn here which is whichever node we put the event on so that will be that one but we don't want to do it on that one so what i'm going to do is we're going to drag off and do get all actors with tag and i'm going to promote the tag to a variable and this will be whichever guard or person we want to change it off so it very well could be you talk to a king and the king says take all of my guards go and rescue my daughter or whatever and then all of the guards turn around and start following you so the tag gives us the ability to do that or just target a single one on the out actors i'm going to drag off and do for each looper over it again and this time we actually need to set this variable on the npc here so i'm going to come to my class settings and i still have an interface here called bpi character which does a bunch of different things so what i can do here is i can actually drop this down click function and create a new function called set actor to follow so doing it via the interface means we don't need to cast to the actor meaning it's a lot more efficient on memory and i'm going to click input so we're going to add an input and it will be new actor and i'm going to set this to a type of actor like so i'm also going to add in a boolean called should remember old actor i'm going to set this to a boolean and the reason i'm doing this is some people you will want to tell them to follow you and when you tell them to stop following you they'll go off and do their own thing they don't need to follow the other person whereas the king's guard in my head will want to go back and follow the king they may have that bit. so this will give you the ability to decide whatever you want them to do now if i come back to my bp npc here and i go to my interfaces you can see i have my set actor to follow and then i'm going to add a branch right at the beginning on this should remember old actor and i'm going to duplicate the actor to follow and call it old actor to follow and i'm going to make sure this one's not visible we don't need it to be publicly known and then if it's true that they should remember the old actor then i'm going to set the old actor to current actor because then they're remembering the old one and then if it's false or they've remembered the actor then we can come into the actor to follow and i'll drag this one here and connect it to the false as well and we'll plug it into the new actor like that it's a bit liney messy but it does work and now we can hit compile and save and now that we have that interface face added to our BPMPC, we can come back to the change actor.
actor to follow. And then I'm going to drag off this array element and use our interface set actor to follow. And it'll say the message and check it's the right interface. And I'll connect it up. And then for both of these, I can set it to the new actor. So you may just be able to plug your actor into it and that would work fine. However, in Narrative's case, it doesn't link directly to the world. So you can't tell it follow this specific actor. Because it just with the way Narrative's built. So what I'm actually going to do instead is drag back on this execute event here. And I'm going to do this same get all actors with tag back here. Except instead of it being called tag, I'm going to promote it to another variable. And I'm going to call this a new actor to follow. And I'm going to keep it a type of name. And I'm going to rename this tag one at the top. Actor to change follow. Drag off and do get. And I can drag this back a little bit more. Give myself some more room. And I'll just check that this is valid. Just to make sure you haven't accidentally put an invalid speaker ID in. And if, it, if it's not valid, then I'm just going to simply return false just like that. Boom. If it is valid, I'm actually going to promote it to a variable so we can use it later. And because this event is only in memory whilst it's running, it's only temporary for the variable to exist in memory. So it's fine. And I'll call this actor to follow. And I'll plug it into the is valid. And then I'll plug this set into the get all actors with tag. Hello. And I'll drag this all back across. Then we'll go off and find all the followers we need to change. Get all of the actors. I'll set the new actor to follow to here. And then I'll promote this should remember old actor to a variable just so we've got the option. Uh, by default, I'll keep it off as full. And then after the completed, I will return true. Make sure you don't return after this here because we're in the middle of a loop. It will run the first one and then exit straight away. You want to make sure it's always on the completed. And now I'm going to hit compile and save. So let's go and give it a try. So if we come back to my dialog now, hey, follow me, I need your help. I'm going to go to the events and I will say change actor to follow. I'm going to open this up and the event runtime I will set to the end. So we'll only start following us once this dialog is finished. The actor to change follow. So the person who we telling should now follow us, that really needs a better name. And I will just come in and call our Kingsguard one, like so. And then the new actor to follow, I will just say player, follow me. Why not? Should remember the old actor. I do want to do that in this case. And then we'll hit compile and save. Now we can't actually add an event here to tell them to go back to the old actor yet. So let's go and quickly create a new event to handle this. So I'll duplicate this event because it does most of what we need anyway. And I'll call it change actor to follow underscore old. And then we'll open this up. And then I'll go back to execute event. And then we don't actually need this new actor to follow bit here anymore. So we can just come and do all of this back here. And instead, what we're actually going to do is I'll create another interface function on this actor here where we can specifically say give us the old actor, which sounds perfect. So I'll just come back to my interfaces folder the super quickly. And I will go into my BPI character. And just where we've got set actor to follow, I'll just duplicate it to get old actor to follow. And I'll just cross both of the inputs off because we don't need any, but we do need an output. I will call this old actor. And I will call it, a I'll set the data type to actor. Now I'll hit compile and save. I'll jump back into my BPMPC in the default, get old actor to follow. And then I will just drag in the old actor to follow. Now the benefit of doing it this way is if old actor to follow is null because you don't, you haven't set one, then old actor will just be null, which is fine. Because now it means in our new event, when we come in and call get old actor to follow, and we plug it in to this set actor to follow, if it's not got one, then it won't follow anyone. So it's perfect. So just plug this old actor into the actor to follow. I'll delete off the actor to follow and the new actor to follow tag. The should remember old actor. I don't think it's needed, but we'll keep it there anyway. Because if we're setting it back to the old actor, then they shouldn't remember the actor that they were just following. Yeah, I'll, but you can keep it there. Get rid of it if you don't want it. And I'll hit compile and save. Now, if we go back to our dialogue on this one, we tell them to follow the player. On this one, we can add the event, which I have not renamed, but that's okay for now. We'll sort it in a moment. Back to the end. And we will say actor to change. We'll be the got king's guard again and then should remember old actor will just ignore it and we'll hit compile and save and now if we test it he should turn around and start following us if we tell him to otherwise he'll go back to following the old king one key part of this is you need to make sure you've tagged yourself with player otherwise it's not going to work if i come here and say hey follow me i need your help you should go yes of course and look at that we now have a companion following us granted the logic's very very basic at the moment and he's only going to walk towards wherever we go but you know he's the most loyal guard ever we go into the middle of combat we we go to another country he will follow us best he can like he will have his limits so if we like run up here where i haven't got a nav mesh set up he will just kind of freeze because he can't get to us so if we come and talk to him and say hey you've been a loyal guard but go away i don't need you anymore he will go right like, right here i'll move back on to the king there we go ladies and gentlemen how cool is that now there is one small thing we do need to fix at the moment if we tell it to not remember the old actor we're actually going to get a bunch of errors from the follow actor because it'll tell it to follow null and then it'll just glitch out i'm going to go into my state tree task where we go follow actor 
actor. And back on the event state back here, I'm going to drag the actor to follow. I'm going to paste it at the beginning. I'm going to right click it and do convert to validate to get and plug it in. And only if it's valid are we going to tell them to move. Otherwise, we're just going to finish the task straight away because they haven't got anybody to follow. Now, in the future, when we properly set it up, they won't just succeed and not follow anyone. We'll tell them to change state trees, roam around, do whatever. But at the moment, this will at least stop it from erroring. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We now have an AI where we can start and we can come back in and we just straight say, hey, follow me. And we now have companions in the game. How cool is that? Pair this up with the past relationship tutorial I've added where they'll either hate you or like you either way or pair it up with the faction system from another previous tutorial and you've got a proper companion system. Now these are very, very basic state trees that we're adding so far just for little things. Eventually we'll go into smart objects. We'll make them attack each other. That'll also be pretty cool. We can make them defend you if you want or defend other actors. There's so many ways we can take this. So what should I do next? Let me know in the comments below for what state tree you'd like us to work at next. I'm going to go off and start trying the 5.4 version of linking to other state trees. And if it seems reliable, I'll do a tutorial on that. It does suck for those people not on 5.4 yet. So I might also do a tutorial on combining it all into one big state tree. It's going to get messy, but it's, it's an early system. So there's still changes to be made. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. If you've got any requests, please let me know below. My name is Decryption and I will see you next time.